Hi, this is Tony Riccardi. Thanks for joining us. I'm here with Dave Young and Vicki Cook and wanted to spend some time and talk directly with our directors of administration and the executive directors. Uh, we've put out a series of videotapes uh, and uh, YouTube trainings and we want to talk today with the DAs. Uh, you have a huge responsibility um, in your roles. So we're excited to go over some of our expectations, but also reinforce some of the training that's already taken place in the schools. Hi everyone, it's Vicki, and the first part of our talk today is going to be about ProCare. And as all of you know, ProCare is the center management program that we use in the schools, and it really spans everything having to do with the families and employees from the time they first register to the time they leave and we delete their fingerprints. So in addition to you guys using ProCare, as uh, CREM is growing, the Team Support Center and the Admissions and Marketing Center relies on ProCare to pull information we need so we don't have to contact you as often and ask you to complete reports for us. So with ProCare, you know, and, and the growth that Vicki's talking about, you know, uh, several departments rely on the information and so the purpose of the ProCare discussion is to make sure that you understand what we expect you to be putting in uh, to ProCare on a daily basis with each parent, with each child and also uh, eliminate communication of what I would say uh, some of the team support center chasing down information with the schools. The uh, goal here is to have you proactive and to input all the information and utilize ProCare correctly. So in ProCare you can uh, break it down into two basic modules that we use. We use the family module which tracks all the information for the family and child and the employee module. And for the family module we're going to break it into three categories. When the family first registers and they're new, the ongoing um, use of it, why the family is enrolled in CREM and then when they exit CREM. Yeah, because there's some big responsibilities throughout each phase here. You know, and one real important thing to keep in mind is that this, <clears throat> that this system is used for, as you know, a lot of things. It's used for billing and accounts receivable and enrollment, uh, checking in, checking out of, of students and the uh, employees. It's emergency con uh, contact information is there, immunization, front door security. It's a really broad scope of, uh, of, of activities that this system handles and you know the key to this is is going to be consistency of information and the timeliness of information and you know as Vicki was saying we, we break things into into three areas and and those are, are, are key things when you start with a brand new one you know a real thing to start with is is who are the payers who 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 is the person and the primary and secondary payers should be the the, the parents or the guardian of the children um, that's that's a, a key point is that we have those at the very very beginning uh, of, of the very first ones for consistency of information you know setting up the address phone numbers uh, it could be work numbers can be um, cell numbers could be home uh, landlines Email addresses. Email addresses very, very important uh, for sending out bills, communicating with with the parents. Uh, we've got a new a new one on here. Uh, that's why it's got asterisks on it because it's a a new field that hasn't been there in the past, and it's the parent workplace, uh, indicating in in there where the parents do work. So we have that as is a key piece of information. Um, entering all of the child registration information, everything related to the child, whether it's you know, things about immunizations, things uh, as far as uh, who the relationships are, 
Um, and then obviously then there's posting of payments once we get the registration fees, the deposit fees, first month tuition, which is going to change as, uh, as, as far as the, the point where this registration is or this new uh, family is in, in the process is going to determine you know, which of those items you bill and collect at, at the various times. So then when the family actually comes that first day when the child is going to start their first day of school, you want to update the enrollment date to the actual date the school's the child starts and then you want to make sure that you update the program that controls the FRE report, the classroom and the schedule which um, controls your roll call sheets and then of course the billing box so you can run program billing. And then throughout the month you want to update and um, post any charges on the ledger that the family incurs and there's another new tracking code in ProCare for the appearance release, which is new with this September's rolling out of the new rates. And that's just so as we take pictures of kids to use in social media, we know whether or not the parents have uh, authorized the use of those pictures and we have an easy record so we can see that. So when we're setting new families up on their monthly billing or existing families, uh, I want to give you, first off, right now in our company, 28% of our parents, our customers, are set up on auto debit, 25% pay by checks, and 47% pay by regular credit card. As the executive director, the DA, when you're setting up a new family or an existing family, we want to see you set up these families on auto debit. So auto debit is our preferred method of payment. And when you're enrolling someone, let them know that the way we do our billing here at Crim de la Crim is we set you up on our auto debit. And we do that by getting your checking account number and routing number and set you up on that monthly basis. We don't charge you extra for it. It's convenient banking. Uh, they trust banking with their bank and their bank gives us the money on a monthly basis. So we want to remove 25% checks. They're already using checks. They have a account, a debit account. Move those to your auto debit, right? Make that professional recommendation. When you see a parent coming in paying by check, move them to auto debit professionally and the credit cards best practice is to move them also your families to auto debit and the best practice will also be 90 percent of our parents our customers have graduated moved to auto debit so when the child just enrolls we want to go through a few things in ProCare and first you would change their enrollment status. You would delete the biometric data, the fingerprints for all the authorized pickups and mark the tracking category that that has done. You want to look at the ledger and if we're holding a deposit on that account, you want to refund the deposit and then depending upon whether they gave the proper notice, if we owe those people, you want to send in the child withdrawal form so they get their money as quick as possible or you want to mark the deposit as forfeited, but you don't want to leave those deposits on account just on those old accounts so two years later we don't know if we owe the family that money or not, and then hide the account so you don't see it all the time. It's important what Vicki just went through, um, you know, removing the biometric data, um, that's mandatory. Uh, so really having a strong exit strategy um, for graduations, for families that move on, and then following this basic checklist in front of you is really important to our operation. Uh, but the other thing is, with everything that we're talking about is, is the better data that you put into ProCare, the better data that's going to come out the back end into ProCare. So garbage in, garbage out, good, taking the time for proper uh, information up front, 
then on the back end, uh, a lot easier for reporting and what we're doing here. Then is uh, we were talking about the 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 family side of it. We mentioned that it also is the employee side in pro care, and there's going to be that same new ongoing and and exiting type maintenance that needs to be done. And when you start off with the new uh, and, and and ongoing, there is the empl the employee actually needing to be set up in in pro care so that they can have their be registered for the appropriate credentials to get in and out of the uh, out of the building but you would need we want to have their address in there phone number in there email address in there it's a, it's another place where you can have very critical information needed as it relates to employees at your fingertips um, the the emergency contact information put in their work uh, starting date it would also be in there if they would terminate to put their termination dates in there any other kind of required information uh, or necessary information such as you know the things on immunizations or other various info that you would see as being something you would want to have readily available at your fingertips that's what you would put in there for the employees one thing we do not want to put in there, however, is going to be any kind of pay rates or social security numbers or those types of very sensitive information. This is information that would you know, help manage the, the process of, of, of employees and just having information that you need at your, at your fingertips. Okay, next we're going to discuss the FRE report. And the FRE report is a management report here for the team support center for the senior management. That's basically a report card of how CREM is doing financially. So it's very important um, that it be accurate and timely. So it's the best way, the best information we have to see how the company is doing on a real time basis to make any corrections needed. So the FRE report is due by the end of business on Friday. And really, as soon as your schedule is set for the week and you know what children are coming in that week, you can complete your FRE report. It doesn't have to wait until Friday. Yeah, this is one that, uh, as we talk about chasing information, that uh, previously it was due Monday, it's due Friday. Um, some schools, uh, Deb Home gets on Wednesday, sometimes Thursday. She already has schools sending in their whole week data uh, by Wednesdays and Thursdays. So uh, we switched it. So that way Monday you can be with your staff, your children, the parents. And then Friday afternoon at the latest is when you're spending the time um, in the bulletin. Uh, just recently was a checklist step by step on how to do it correctly and it's also important to make sure that if you're the only person in the building that knows how to do it that you're training one or two more people so that way if you're sick if you're on vacation there's a nice process in place to make sure that it's always um, up here on time so this is one that's really important to us so please take note of this and put some systems in place to make sure it's done uh, correctly and timely each week. I think if you just review that checklist and um, you'll have it made. You won't be getting any reports back for corrections. Next thing that uh, is an important item that, that you all do and that is processing the payroll. <clears throat> is, uh, uh, we all know uh, a good paycheck for, for employees makes them happy. and. This is a, a critical piece um, in, in what we use is, is ProCare is the time tr uh, tracking mechanism where it, it will create the, the time sheets and you can print those off and for review and the employees to be able to review. But um, you know other things that go along with, with that um, in, in the payroll processing element is tracking all of the, all of the time off whether it be their personal days, whether it be their vacation days, that's what um, you will be will be tracking. It's an important piece of the of the information gathering 
element for processing a payroll and for employees to know what they have in the way of personal time off uh, remaining. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the time sheets that would be created off of ProCare. Um, it's the re review of that, uh, making sure that it's correct, making sure that you're identifying the time off and, and, and identifying it as whether it's on, the, on your logs for, for personal time off. Um, making sure that you put all of the information into ADP correctly. I mean, it's, it's critical uh, that we have the appropriate hours being entered in, any kind of rate changes that take place due to reviews, uh, having that all entered in and correct, uh, making sure that deductions are, are there, all of the voluntary deductions that should be uh, there for, for the various insurance programs, uh, that you've got all of that entered in for tuition uh, deductions for, for tuition that they're paying for their children. Um, all, all need to be up to date so that uh, it, is, it is current and, and is, is pulling the right information, uh, or right amounts I should say, out of, out of their paychecks. And this is a, uh, a bi-weekly process as you, as you probably already know, but um, working uh, those timesheets. So some, some schools like to do them weekly, like to pull the timesheets weekly and, and look at them and make sure that they're accurate and current and, and some prefer to do it every two weeks. Um, I think the big thing is, is either way is fine. The, the, the critical part is just making sure that it's done in, at a point in time where it can be uh, pulled together and reviewed and, and uh, submitted on a timely basis. And you know we want to, on, on we're talking about clocking in and clocking out using ProCare for that. That is a process for for all employees, including mm -hmm. directors. Uh, we want to have the directors doing it the same same way, and it's it's um it's it's good practice. Um, and although it won't be used for for the directors for for payroll purposes, um, it is it is a good practice for for managing the, 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 the school uh, facility. Yeah, so uh, some of you already do this, thank you, but all executive directors, every director, please make sure that you're using this to clock yourself in. If you leave for lunch, you're clocking out, you're clocking back in after lunch, and then you're um, clocking out at the end of the day. And if you have employees that aren't following this, uh, please make sure they are and uh, also as leaders of your school, uh, we have an obligation to make sure that our people, our team is being paid correctly, right? And that's where you step in to make sure that all hours are accounted for and that we're paying them appropriately each check. So the next item is invoices. And the reason why the invoices go to you guys first is so that you can verify that you received the goods or services because if they just came here and we directly paid them, if you we could be paying for items that you haven't even received. So that's why they go to you. You want to send them in weekly. The worst thing you want to do is waste your time with uh, vendors on the phone asking where their check is. So the faster you turn those over, the faster they get paid, the happier your vendors will stay. So you just want to make sure you break them down into the proper account codes and any new vendors we need a W-9 for, that's an IRS regulation, and that you review each week your AP check register to make sure that your vendors, everybody you sent in, are getting paid. And then the next one is just when we're paying vendors for services, this is the preference CREM has in the way we would like to pay vendors. The number one way we would always want is an invoice sent to the team support center so it can be paid by corporate check. And that's so at year end all the 1099 vendors are recorded into our financial system so we can send 1099s out to them, tracking them down from vendors we pay through the local checking account late December. If any of you have had to do that once you pay so someone for a one-time magic face painting person tracking them down after they've received that check and you don't have ongoing business is kind of a hassle. So 
the number one way is to ask the vendor to invoice you and then the second way would be if you have to if you have an emergency plumbing repair or something and the plumber won't bill you is to pay them out of the local check and then the third option would be the ED credit card if you had something that simply couldn't be paid by the first two options. Yeah, and then as always, if there's any expense that exceeds $300, please make sure you're communicating with the team support center first. And as Vicki was talking about the, the local uh, checking account and being a, a, an option, we want to talk a little bit more about the, the local checking account and petty cash. Um, it is it, it's intended for immediate needs, uh, as, as Vicki had mentioned, where you have a, a certain vendor that comes in and says, hey, I, I'm sorry, I'll do this, but I'm only gonna, only gonna take a check. Um, the, the important thing is, is to maintain your check register so that you know whether you've got cash in the bank. I mean, it's like a, your personal checking account is what, is what you're doing there, so that you're sure that you've got cash covering it. And what, um, when you get to a certain point, um, when you get to a, a level of, oh, <clears throat> say $500 or so, you really need to be thinking about uh, getting, getting a reimbursement uh, uh, re submitted to us or a reimbursement request sent in. And you can email those uh, requests to, to Vicki, and typically the way we do that is just having you send in your updated local checking account spreadsheet, which shows us you know, where, where you're at on, on, on the levels, and then we use that as our way of being able to identify what amount we need to, to reimburse or to replenish your account for. Um, but what we would like to have, or what you should be including in, in with the the check register on a monthly basis when you send it in is is original invoices that support all of the amounts that you're paying the amounts that uh, show on your check register so that we've got uh, that that invoice and that, that supports it and, and shows what is being purchased and and coding it as well to break it down into the individual types of accounts that that, that expenditure relates to and there are separate columns on the on the spreadsheet that have account numbers to it and and so you just split it um, split it accordingly and there is a last column on it is a general you you assign the account number type of a column because we don't, couldn't put a, enough columns on that spreadsheet for every single every single transaction that you would use um, the big thing is is so <coughs> also keep your your petty cash box in a secure place as well as the checkbook itself that has all the checks on it you want it in in a locking drawer so that it is got limited access and is is in a safe and secure spot yeah just like you know your wallet and your purse it's secure it's safe you know what it is um, as business operators we're entrusting you know you with the business so the next slide on student and employee files, the most important thing on here is you want to keep them locked. You want to, um, it has sensitive information. Uh, there's laws that require that they stay locked and on those employee files, you want to keep a folder separate for licensing so you're not giving all the information from the employee file to the licensing agent, just the stuff the state requires. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, think about it, it's, it's your, what if your personal information was unlocked and your housekeeper had access to it? It's just, it's not good, right? So, big one, uh, Vicki, secure, lock all personnel files, and the same thing uh, with parent-child information, so important, everything is secured and locked. Right. The next item we wanted to talk about is is the Tea Bear store, and and the merchandise in there and the the sales of it is you know we use a a, um, a, a software region to account for the inventory and to account for all of the all of the sales. Um, you know, a critical piece of that is 
maintaining the, the inventory levels and identifying or updating them for purchases that you receive, purchases of, of, of merchandise that come from uh, Touchstone, uh, getting the packing slip, making sure there's a packing slip and verifying that everything that is on the packing slip is, is in the box, and then entering those quantities into the Regit software. As you, sell, as you sell items, um, you will create a bill through this same software. And that is the source document for entering into ProCare, the T-Bear sales, which shows on the parent's monthly uh, invoice. Uh, at the end of each month, there are reports that uh, we ask that you provide. Uh, it's a master sales report and a transaction logs spreadsheet uh, those and a, and a and a inventory value report those are all three pieces of information two are hard copy reports that you would fax in one is uh, another report that you would email to us and the a, th a second one that you would email to us would be the the inventory database file two of those you just do as a uh, pull off of the the database and what um, you will do then is also complete a reconciliation as you go in and process all of the sales in Regit uh, what and you enter those into Procare that reconciliation process is taking what Regit says was the total sales for the month on the master sales report and you are reconciling that to make sure that it matches the total um, T-Bear sales in ProCare for that month so that they we're sure that everything that was that you wrote up as a sale made it into ProCare and billed to the parents. And then lastly uh, there's the, the quarterly activity that we do and that is a physical inventory of, uh, of the items that are in the store um, and comparing those quantities that you count to the quantities that show in Regit, making the appropriate adjustments to the quantities to, uh, to, to get the uh, quantities to reflect actually what's in the store. And you know on T-Bear this one is um, kind of a critical critical item and we have some some challenges each month, and so this one is uh, what we really want is to have your 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 assistance to make sure that you take the the, the time to to look at the, look at the information that you you've got and, and to make sure that it's uh, that it is correct. So, to the directors of administration, thank you for everything that you do. Um, we're pleased to have you on our team. You have a big responsibility, um, a lot of work in front of you because with this in front of you, you also have being out there as a working receptionist if you don't have one, also being in front of the parents for those highs and goodbyes and interactions and building relationships with both the children and the parents. So thank you um, for everything that you do and our schools that makes us the best of the best. Thanks everybody and remember we're always here to support you so if you have any questions just give us a call. Thanks a lot for uh, all your help and uh, we appreciate all you do for us and look forward to working with you uh, more in the future. Bye bye.